Uh, good to see you this morning. Uh, of course, you know that we're not having a nursery and children's church at this time. Uh, WMU and Brotherhood have been posted on. We're just kind of easing into it this morning. But I'll tell you, I'm like Brother Joy. It sure is good to see y'all. Amen. When you get up here and do this before people, you know, total or something, it's 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 a little different. But I, it was like a sea of people this morning, doesn't it? And you two right here, I love y'all. <laughs> Miss Shirley says she had the mafia with her this morning. <laughs> She's got a, that's why that pocketbook's so big. She's got a big Uzi in there. <laughs> oh, well, we love y'all. Good to see everybody. Uh, the offering box is in the back. If you want to put your tithes and offering back there, Brother Deke built us a, a, a thing that looks like a church. You can slide your offering in there. That way we don't have to pass the plates. Congratulations to all the graduates. Uh, let's see. Uh, today's our first worship service to get together. We're going to do two services for a while, and we're going to just go down this path for a while and, and see, and and uh, maybe uh, revamp it a little bit later. And y'all pray that God would just uh, lead us and direct us in that. Uh, you Sunday school classes uh, are uh, got two two classes right yes, sir. back here in the back, so you can see Brother Matt and uh, Sister Margie about that, and they're uh, meeting in there. Hope for the Hunger was a good success. They uh, got to uh, witness, uh, give some food uh, to 102 families, and we appreciate that. Vacation Bible School is uh, final decision hadn't been made on that. We're probably but, going to do something. We're just trying to figure out what, okay. at what point. So we're probably going to do. Okay, okay. Cumberland County, uh, Cumberland, Kentucky mission trip has been canceled. So a lot of changes, a lot of things going on, but it's good to see everybody. It's good to see you this morning. Come on up here and lead us in some songs. I heard Brother Sammy say in one of his sermons that he wanted to hear Amazing Grace. We're going to sing that. But let me tell you about some of the things that's happened to me. Uh, you know, me and Irene is going to celebrate 60th anniversary, our 60th anniversary real quick. Said, well, when is it? July, July. <laughs> but I know what, it's getting pretty iffy. We have spent seven days a week, 24 hours a day, nine weeks, 10 weeks, whatever, and she's about had enough of me. <laughs> so one, one day last week, I got an idea, and uh, I found a, one of the kids' darts, and I had an old United States uh, map of the, of the United States paper map in my car and I went out there and got it and stuck it on the kitchen wall and I told her, I could tell she was aggravated at me and I said you throw this dart and wherever you hit on this map we're going to spend a vacation there when this thing's over she was mad and she ran right back and threw that thing hard as she could it bounced off of everything and we're going to spend two weeks behind the refrigerator so, <laughs> Sometimes are here filling men's hearts with fear. Freedom we all hold dear. Now is at stake. Holding your heart to God saves from the chastening rod. Seek the way pilgrims trod. Christians awake. Jesus is coming soon, morning or night. Sounds will surely sound. All of the dead, the dead shall, shall rise. rise. Righteous meet in, in the skies. Going where no, going where no one, one dies. Heaven were found. Love was so many cold, losing their home of gold. This is God's word is told, he was abound. When these signs come to pass, nearing the end at last, it will come very fast, trumpets will sound. Troubles will soon be o'er, happy forevermore, when we meet on that shore. Up in the 
has got, telling this world goodbye. Homeward we then will fly, glory to share. Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming soon, morning or night, morning or night or noon. Many, many will meet, many will meet their doom. doom. Trumpets will sound. Righteous meet in the skies, skies. Going, where going where no one, one dies, dies. Every word found. All right, so it's on Lynn's shoulders today. Yes, it is. You got to tell me when to stop. <laughs> Lynn's going to stand up in the back like, that's enough. Okay, so y'all just, I gave, I gave Sammy the early one, and next week I'm going to take the early one. I told him we got to confine the time, and so he gets the, the, so if we're here till two, Shirley, just hang in here with me. I'm just playing. Don't get up and leave, Don, on that, because I said. <laughs> we tried to separate, I wanted to separate the crowd this morning. I wanted to separate it, you know, and I, and I, I want y'all to hear what I'm about to say, so don't miss this. Don't miss this. I'm not afraid of you, okay? I'm not afraid of you on any level. And, and if you, you're like, man, is Brother Joey going to hug me? I, I promise you, I am not listening to CNN, okay? I'm not listening to uh, a media that, 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 that misleads us. I'm not listening to a government that at times has lied to us along the way, okay? What I've got faith in is something different. So, you know, so we decided we were going to put the people, the huggers over here. If you're willing to hug, you stay over here in this group. If you're limited to handshakes right here in this group, and this is the no touch ems over here, okay? <laughs> So if you're afraid to touch, you're going to be over here on the left side. And then you know what? The handshakers and the huggers. And that way when we start separating, I told Matthew he was supposed to sort through it before we ever got in here. And uh, that way we'd know who to go to. Learned a couple of things. Like I said, Lynn, I'm going to be here a while. I, I can't even get started good. Uh, I tried to protect the folks that hope for the hungry. I've learned some hard lessons along the way. I asked the older people not to come. Sister Jeanette got really mad at me. She said, I'm not in that group, Brother Joey. <laughs> I don't know who you're defining as older people. I'm not one of those people. So you know what I'm saying? So you know what? We're, we're thankful. I, I have, like Brother Sammy has, I have some thanks that I, that I do want to do. And y'all y'all bear with me for a second because this is important to me. This is important to me. I, from the bottom of my heart, these two people right here, God bless Sammy and Wanda. Joker has been here the whole way. <laughs> kind of like fighting a battle. You know, I told Lynn, I said, there were a lot of nights I watched these ministers that were doing things by themselves. I was never by myself. Amen. Right. Amen. So it's, Sister Wanda's like the mother of the group. She keeps me and Sammy in line and makes sure we do everything right. She has great, brought folks down here to sing, and uh, she's got people in here. Huh, and she... She knew <laughs> it was beating on me so bad at the hole. She's y'all were trying to get things on the screen. And you you do not some of you sometimes, as Sammy said earlier, some people were on vacation through this. There were some people that were not, and, and the two of them at no point were not. They were not on vacation. I appreciate what they did. And I really and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. So I appreciate my wife and kids because they put up with me through all of this. And you know, when we were gone during the week and we're trying to do stuff on Wednesday nights and being gone a lot during the week to, to make things happen in the church. And, uh, you know, the church is trying to survive in a different time. And I appreciate that, uh, you know, we would be coming home. Some of them some of them Thursday nights got to us some three and three and a half hour ordeals. We had, there was one night when, I think when Brother Randy came through, it was like a revival Thursday night when they came in. My sister Melody came and sang. It was just like, we had some great nights. So I don't want y'all to think by any means we weren't having a good time. We were having a good time along the way. I, I won't. The guys that were doing the media, y'all don't miss this. There was a time six months ago, if you missed me preaching it, and when I said it one time, you know, Mike Mike was coming in there one day trying to tell me how many people had watched the video six months ago, and like, man, I don't even know if what we're doing. Without Billy, without Mike, and without Scott doing what they did, they deserve a huge round of applause. <laughs> I mean that. They do deserve that. Those, those fellows went from somebody that you didn't think you were paying attention to Without them, we didn't have a chance. And, and you know what? And I praise God that, that God 
laid on their hearts, every one of those men, to do what they did. And, and you know what? And, and not only that, Dick, to be here every night. These guys were leaving work. They were trying to run down here after work, and it wasn't easy. I, I'm, so great, I'm so thankful for what they did. I thank you, Brother Don, and, and, and what you did. Brother Don came to me early on with some ideas about the prayer group. We tried to make that happen. On Wednesday nights on Facebook, those of you, we, we, we never stopped. And I you know you see, what, what in the world is that over there? It was Walter Cronkite's little setup. It took us a little while. We had to get Walter Cronkite set up, but Brother Don, he got, he got, he got from, he was nervous, Randy, in front of the camera early on, but he got to liking the camera later on. So you know how that is. He became, and I love it. And I don what Don did and from teaching Sunday school, man, I tell you what, they, they, they didn't give up, and, and, I, and I appreciate that. That, that, is, that shows you what God's all about, and I appreciate what they were doing. Thank God. Thank God for our deacons and their wives. Thank you. I, wanna, I, I really want to put out a big hand of applause to these people. There's nobody that I came in contact with at some point that didn't say that they had talked to one of the deacons somewhere along the way and, 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 and through all this and, and saw what was going on. And I, I appreciate the gifts and the things that went out, the Easter baskets, whether it was stuff for Mother's Day, you know, just these, these men and these women trying to do their best to come together to do what, to stay in contact the best we could, y'all. You know what? We were trying to do the best we could, and, and I appreciate the men and women that, that made that, that part. And you know what? I loved it when I was talking to even if you, if you said, you know, I'm going to call Jackie, I'm going to call Jackie, and then you call Jackie, and you're like, I know this is going to be an hour. I know this is going to be an hour, but I'm going to call her anyway, Lawrence. <laughs> But you get on that phone and listen to her talk about the people that she had talked to. I mean, that was, that was special. And I appreciate the men that checked on these ladies and, and continue to check on these ladies. It was, that was so important, so we're grateful for them. Thank for the folks that, that hung in there with Hope for the Hungry with us. We had a great time the other day. Uh, the boys came. I made the boys come. I, I think the word at our house is called voluntold. They don't get to volunteer. It's called your Maggie, Max, and Matthew, when you are a preacher's kid, you don't get to volunteer for anything. You're, you, you understand that, don't you? This, you're voluntold. And, and when I got back, I, I came back in to Max and Matthew, and I said, you know, I, wanna, I apologize. I know I make y'all do stuff. And Max like, stop. Just stop. He said, Dad, I had the time of my life. He said, spending time with those Deke and those guys that were up there working, Brother Deke, Brother Lawrence, Brother Jimmy, he said, we, we had an absolute ball today. Don't, don't apologize for anything. Thanks for those men, that, that these, these folks that came out and took time. Hey, y'all, I don't know if y'all know this. There are still people in need. And I, I'm thankful. Listen, I'm thankful that our church is in a financial situation that we don't have to say, I'm, I'm on the phone with a lot of ministers during the week, and they're saying, oh, my, we got, we got to, maybe we got to stop missions or Maybe we got to stop giving. Hey, listen, y'all, we're going to push forward for God, okay? Amen. 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 We're not suffering. We're not sitting over here saying anything, oh, man, we need to quit paying, do it, quit doing that. No, we're going to quit helping. We're going to keep helping people. Thank God for that attitude. Thank God for those who are helping Matt. Thank you with the kids. I know Matt was trying so hard. I, I, he, have y'all y'all know Batman? You know who Batman is? Everybody know who Batman is? Have you ever seen the Joker? You know, the Joker's got like a painted smile on his face. When Brother Matt was here Wednesday night, you couldn't surgically remove that smile when he was around those kids. He was so happy to get back. And I'm going to tell you, he was so happy to be back in God's house. And that's how I feel about this. Maybe this will wipe some of the gloom off of y'all's faces. <laughs> we are so happy to be in God's house. And I mean, that's the way we should be. And so I'm, I'm grateful for Matt and staying in there. With, and then everyone, everybody, every single one, along the way that made a call that told somebody that they love them, they sent a card, you know, to let you know that somebody was thinking about you. And to, to, you know what, to make a gift, to make to whatever you did in the name of Jesus Christ, thank you. Thank you for doing that. And I tell you what, it is essential, it is essential to be about God's business. It really is. So for the next couple of weeks, it's for the next couple of weeks, if you got your Bibles, Joey's going to have some, some fun, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not the politically correct person. I told Lynn, Lynn got to hear part of it the other night. I got on the phone with the ministers, and I told Deke this story. I got on the phone with the ministers and the local deal. I think I would have got kicked off the preacher island pretty quick because I am a, there, you'd be amazed at how many churches are not going back to church. And uh, listen, and uh, so I got, I got to calm down, take a deep, deep, deep breath, Randy. I got to breathe. <laughs> at some point, we as Christians have got to either believe God is in control or he's not. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Our faith is in something bigger than the, our government. Y'all listen to what I'm saying. 
And God help us, it's bigger than the media, okay? Our faith is in something bigger than what the media is telling us, okay? Our God is bigger than this. Next couple of weeks, I'm going to have some fun, Shirley, and that's why I said I don't know where I'm going to get with this, but, uh, but I'm going to talk about my God. And maybe some of us have forgotten how important our God is or where he's at in our life. And Joey, I'm scared. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm back over here in a hole. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you, I, I'm not scared. I'm not afraid. You know, I tell Lynn all the time. I, I hear about these stories of these missions. We're going to get to heaven one day. Y'all listen to me on this. We're going to get to heaven one day. And there's going to be that missionary that was in Uganda. There was going to be that missionary that was in Uganda that, that had to go spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. And knowing that every day that he got up, every day that he got up, Marchie, that that might be some Muslim that was going to take his life for what he was preaching or teaching. But you know what he did, Shirley? He kept on preaching. Shame on us in America today. We are scared of something that may not even exist at all. Or we've made it into something else. I'm going to tell you something. I know some of you may roll your eyes at me, and that's fine. History will be the greatest teacher in this one. When we look back on this one day, and they're going to say, they got us on that. They have taken away our civil liberties, and we said it home, and we said it was okay. Listen to me, America. If you hear me now, you hear me now, church. Shame on us. Next week, we celebrate Memorial Day. There are people who died who gave their life for the freedoms that we have so easily given away. Easily given away. I want to be back in church. And I am not afraid to be back in God's house. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So we're going to get God's Bible. We're going to have some fun this morning. Maybe you get to go home for lunch. You can't go out to eat anyway, Joey. It'll be okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It won't be that long. Lynn will put, she'll, she'll ring the bell. She's got a bell with her. She's looking at the clock. She's got a bell. She's got the towel. Don't do this. If you tap your left hand, I think you're meaning bring in the closure. That's Sammy. That could be another 40 minutes, so don't do that. <laughs> you know how to go to the bullpen. Don't go to the bullpen today, Lynn. <laughs> Sammy, Sammy still got a message from this morning. If you got your Bibles, let's turn over the book of Genesis in chapter 45. Genesis in chapter 45. I'm going to read a piece of a verse and uh, go have some fun. Might as well have some fun while we're here. And, uh, and think about what's going on. Genesis chapter 45, we're going to be in verse 8. Genesis chapter 45 and verse 8. Some of you, when you listen to this later and you think about what I'm about to say, you'll get this later. My wife's going to get it instantly. So we're, we're going to be talking about the story of Joseph. I like talking about Joseph. Y'all laugh, you'll get that later. Surely it's because my name's Joseph. That's why I was being funny there. But jokes aren't funny when nobody gets them. Would you just give me a courtesy laugh, Toby? Just do that. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> Let's get going. I love talking about Joseph. Joseph is an important entity in the Bible. He's a great man of God. And, 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 and looking at the life, I told Brother Samuel, we could talk about 100 different things to talk about Joseph. And we could talk about in his life that, that are so important. But I want to go to the end. I want to go to the end, Sister Jeanette. I want to go to the end of his story for just a minute. I want to go to the very end. I want to look at a comment that, that Joseph made that is so important. I want to look at a comment that, that Joseph, after he went through the hills and the valleys and going sideways and everything that he went through, I want you all to pay attention to what Joseph said because it's important for this moment in time. It's important for us as Christians that we recognize this. So we go to Genesis chapter 45. We're going to be in verse 8. And the Bible says, so it was not you that sent me hither, but God. That's all I'm going to read. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we are so grateful. We're so thankful for the time that we have to come into your house once again. God, I'm thankful. I'm grateful for the people that serve this house. God, I'm thankful for, the, for those that, that their hearts, souls, and minds have been to be about your business through this time, through this crisis. God, I just pray this morning that, God, Lord, that you'd build a hedge of protection around your people. Your word talks about that. I believe that you would build a hedge of protection around us in our homes. Dear God, Lord, that you would protect us. And, God, Lord, then, then let us see, dear God, Lord, that you are the one that's building that hedge. 
Lord, I pray this morning, God, as we come into this house, God, to just take a moment in time and, and just think about what you're doing. Lord, I pray that, God, you'd be with us now, Lord. Lead us, guys, and direct us. Lord, be saving souls and, and Lord, changing lives as only you can. Through all these ministers in America that are out there today, dear God, Lord, I pray those men of God would continue to preach your word and teach your word as the best they can. Lord, just stand behind them. Be with us now, Lord, for this, this moment in time. Lead us, guys, and direct us. And in Jesus Christ's name we pray, Lord. Amen and amen. You know, it, it, it's, it's kind of hard sometimes to see, surely, if you will. We, we, we make the statement. We do. We make the statement so many times in our lives. We make the statement that God is in control. You know, we, 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 we're taught that, Toby. We are. We're, we're, we're taught that God's, you know, we, we love to say it, don't we? God's got this. We want to say that. But sometimes... Brother Matt, our actions kind of show otherwise. Sometimes we, we want to say, we want to, we want to stand up with the, with the fundamental thoughts and say, I know my God's protected me, and I know my God's got this. But you know what? When push comes to shove, and the, when all that all kind of meets the road there, Brother Lawrence, Christians sometimes kind of act a little different, if you will. It's a time, time for, for reflection. I told Lynn one day that, that I feel like when we get to heaven, and, and, and God is talking us through this, Brother Dennis. I think when we get to heaven and God gets to talk us through this, uh, Lynn's a teacher, and, and, and I told her that I think we're going, as Christians, to get a big, nice F for this one. I think we're going to get a big F for this one. I really are. I don't think there's going to be an A+. Plus. I don't think there's going to be a B or, or C-. minus. I think we're actually going to get delivered like God is going to look at us and say, are you kidding me? You remember that time when Jesus was looking at that centurion man and said, man, I have not seen such great faith. I'm going to tell you something. If any time in America when Christians could have shown some faith, I am telling you what, you know what we did? Y'all know what we did. We ran to our holes. We ran into our holes. We let us back them up. We let us go away. And I'm going to tell you something. Well, we can sit here and we say, God's got his hand on this. God's got control of this. God is always in possession of this. But I'm going to tell you something. We ran like a bunch of scared rabbits. We ran like a bunch of scared rabbits. It took God completely out of the equation. We did. We did. I'm going to tell you one of the hardest things that Joseph did. He is at the end of his story. He is at the end of his story. And I'm going to get into the valleys and the pieces of it. And those of you who read your Bible, have an understanding of your Bible, and go through everything, his brothers are sitting there in front of him. He's, he's a ruler. The Pharaoh has put him as a ruler over you know, deciding what to do through this famine, if you will, Toby. He's got his hands on it. If I get too close to her, just reach out there and kick me in the leg. Okay, I'll, I'll back up. <laughs> as, as we see that, he's sitting there with his family, Lawrence. He's, he's sitting there with his family. You know that they're sad. Man, they, they've just been told it's their brother Joseph, Sammy. They've just been told it's their brother Joseph. They, they're all in a little bit of disbelief. And you know, they got in their head, Marchie, that, you know, they're thinking about that day they put him in a hole. They're thinking about that day when they, they put him back down in the hole to sell him into slavery. Probably had to be a feel-good moment for him, didn't it, Jerry? <laughs> Man, thinking about the day looking back on this. But I'm going to tell you something, Joseph got big, Lawrence. He did, he got real big. He could have got and said, you know what, I'm going to put y'all out over here to the side. I ain't going to feed y'all for what you did to me. He could have held a grudge. He could have gotten mad. He could have, but you know what he did? He showed something that, that God see, we see all through God's love. And Joseph said, listen to me. When you put me in that hole back there, and I guarantee you there's not a whole lot of us that can do this. When you put me in that hole back there, you didn't do that. God did that. Holy cow, are you kidding me? Are you absolutely kidding me? You mean to tell me, Joseph, that when you went through this trial, that your view of being in a hole, is that God put you there? How many of you, when you go through this and you're, you're in your prayers at night and you're in your, you know, people that are listening. Hey, look, y'all, there's a lot of people Listen to me. Listen to me. They won't come to church. They're not going to come to church. I'm going to say, Joe, we're doing the right thing. We're going to protect people. And I'm afraid. I'm on whatever. Listen to me. While you're sitting there like, man, I can't believe 
that God would have us here at this time. Listen to me, y'all. God does have this. He does have this. So as, as Joseph gets that minute to reflect, oh man, I tell you, there had to be some reflection. <laughs> as Joseph gets that minute to reflect, how many of you have been through a valley in your life? <laughs> I have. I've been through some valleys in my life. How many of you are married? Any married men in the room? There's some married men. I know you've been through some valleys. <laughs> Women, y'all get that later. <laughs> Shirley, have you ever thrown Lawrence in a hole? <laughs> I wondered how you'd even match for that. <laughs> I'm going to take a break on that, Shirley. <laughs> but you know when Joseph started and he had to stop and think about all the things that he'd been through. Sammy, you, don't you know it's hard to praise God in the valleys? I think that's probably one of the hardest things we'll ever do, March, isn't it? It's to really lift up the name of God, Renee, and just, you know what, I know y'all been going through some things. Like, it's tough to reach your hands up high and say, thank you, God, for this valley. It's hard to do that, isn't it? Thank you, God, for putting us here. Poor old Joseph got his brothers threw him in a hole. And if that wasn't bad enough, they threw him into some slavery. They sold him into slavery. And you'd think that the, the, the world would have just ended there. When you look at Joseph's story and you think about all the things that he continually went through, every minute you think he'd just get right back up on top of it for just a second, surely pff, he's right back down. <laughs> And I'm going to tell you something. There, there's times in our lives. I, I got thinking about this week, Deke. Me and Deke, we, I, I got thinking about this this week. We were, we were going. We, we, were, we were going. This has been hard for me, Dennis. I have literally, in, my, in, the, in the last couple years of my life, and I'm being honest about this. My wife knows this. My kids know this. I have seen, I have seen more people come to Jesus. I have been part of a church with people with more people coming to Jesus Christ, more people being baptized in the name of Jesus than I have ever seen in my life. I, I, want, I want y'all to know, I, I felt like I was on a hilltop. And I told Sammy one time, what did I say, Sammy? This ain't going to last forever, is it? This ain't going to last forever. And I'm going to tell you what, as, as I read the names on that list and I watched these things go on, as I, as, as I, as I viewed this, I'm like, man... Man, who can stop this? And I'm going to tell you something. The devil has hit us with a freight train. He figured it out. Man, if I can't get in the church, I'll get in the government, I'll get in the media, that'll scare them to death. And he got us out of the church. He did. Don't, don't. Y'all think about this. You pray on a little while later. You'll figure it out. But I'm going to tell you something. We had a hilltop and the devil's got us in a valley. Now, what's tough to do is when we're in that valley is to recognize that, you know what, even though we're in that valley, that there is a God that still sits on the throne. That ain't changed, has it, Sister Shirley? There is a God that still sits on the throne, and God still has this. He's got every part of this. Now, he had it when all the souls were getting saved and the people were coming to Jesus. I tell you one night, Connie, Connie knows this. I don't mind saying it in church. There was one night we were sitting here on a Wednesday night, and I was, I, I got a little depressed, man. I mean, it was tough. Like I said, Sammy, we'd have to pick each other up. Luckily, I got some people that are around me. You're picking each other up. There's times you would get depressed, and, man, where is this going? And I, I got to looking at the things that were going on, and, man, this is sad. And one night we were sitting here on a Wednesday night on a prayer group, weren't we, Don? And, and, and over the screen, over the screen comes up, Connie puts it on there, just so y'all know, Morgan got saved. <laughs> I said, you know what? God ain't out of business. <laughs> he ain't stopped doing what he was doing. The devil wants us to believe that he has. He wants us to buy into that. And the more of us that buy into that is when this starts, we're losing faith in this. And we're like, man, Joey, is there any way? But God still got his hand on it. God still got his hand on what's going on. So Joseph, he went through the, he got put in the hole. 
He got taken out of hole. He got sold into slavery. When things got good, he got to Potiphar's house, and he's in a great deal in a slave situation. He became the head slave, I think the Bible teaches us. And man, you know what? To be a head slave, that must be pretty cool, I guess. But the Bible teaches us that when he became a head slave, the, 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 the Potiphar's wife kind of turned away, on, did something to him, and we'll get into that. That's another story for another day. But it ended up, poor old Joseph did the right thing, and he ended up in jail. He ended up in jail. It don't matter what happens. And you know, now I want you all to think about this. As I go through the story and the negatives of what's going on, poor old Joseph, no matter where he's at, he's able to reflect with his brothers that put him in that hole. You didn't put me here. <laughs> God had his hand on this the whole time. I'm going to tell you something, Matt. That's, that's, hard. that's a hard. That's a hard thought to think that, that God, it's a hard thought, Renee, sometimes that God meant for me to go through a valley. It's a hard thought that God meant for me to have to transgress. It's a hard thought that meant that I've got to suffer. We want to stay on the hilltops. Poor old Joseph, he tried to help some of those guys in prison. He tried to help some of those guys in prison, enlighten them as to how to get them out. You know what I'm saying? Got one of them out, and one of them, I think he even told Joseph, didn't he, Sammy? He said, you know what, I'm going to remember you when I get back in the king's house. And he forgot all about him when he got gone. No, Sammy said that to me. We get talking about our messages sometimes. No, Sammy gets off and left field with me. But y'all wouldn't believe that, would you? <laughs> you think Sammy's got some series. <laughs> but he spent two years. He spent two years after he helped somebody out in prison. What do you think that was like? How do you think? Y'all, we're talking about eight weeks. Hey, Rick, we're talking about eight weeks of our life that got disrupted. We're talking about, Brother Jerry's talking about having to live with Irene for nine weeks. Amen. Think about that disruption. It's like being in prison, wasn't it, Jerry? <laughs> Irene, you know better, don't you? <laughs> she ain't going to say, Jerry, she's going like to tell me, Joey, sit down, it's my turn. I've heard this for too many years. But here Joseph was, he sat there for two years, y'all, not eight weeks, not ten weeks, not a minute of their life. For two more years, he still sat in prison before, listen to this, before God got him out. Now, he could have sulked. It could have been that turning point in his life and said, you know what, I'm tired I'm tired of, of God. God obviously doesn't have this. God doesn't have me in control. But you know what God did? Because, see, he remembered that all along the way, that every part of this, that God had control of. Now, every one of those valleys, you know what they had, they had with them, Toby? They had some hilltops. Where's, where's Max at, Maggie? He's back here in the back. Maggie's going to have to. Who's, who's the favorite kid in our house? <laughs> I, th I thought Max was going to run out of the back and say, Matthew. <laughs> Y'all, we're awful. I know. I'm just being funny. But I'm going to tell you something. When old Joseph put on that coat of many colors that day that his dad gave him, I bet he was feeling pretty good about himself, wasn't he? You know, he, he had some times in his life when, you know what, everything. Man, my dad loves me. My family loves me. You know, I bet there were some times in his life, Sammy, when he was on the hill, there's no way that I could come down out of this, is there? There is no way I could come off of this hilltop. How many of you in your life, in your Christian walk, Brother D, have been on a hilltop and said, there's no way that I could come down from this? It's funny when you say that when you get to the end of Joseph's life. And he, I bet he was thinking about when he was sitting there thinking about that coat. It was like, huh, that was the beginning of a long ride. <laughs> you know, there was a time when, when he, he was in slavery and he was, he was a slave to a family and he was in Potiphar's house. He got sold into slavery and he got to go be the head of the house. And that was a great spot to be in. It was a great spot to be in because, he, you know, he was the director of all the other folks. You know what? And they had, Potiphar had put trust in him. You know what? He, he went from here. He went down the valley. And as he was coming back out of the valley again, he probably thought to himself, Marchie, look at me. I'm on the hilltop again. 
It's just okay. It isn't what I wanted, Lawrence, but it's okay. I can live with this. Another hilltop. Yo, we're going to have the hilltops. And boom, you know what? Right after that, he was feeling pretty good about himself in Potiphar's house and back in the valley again. Bible tells us that he got in good with the head jailer. I know it's hard to be positive when you're in jail, <laughs> Deke. But even Joseph found a way to be positive when he was in prison. He did. Man, you know, Joe, this is a guy with a coat of many colors way back here with his dad was taking care of him. He was a favorite kid. Now all of a sudden, he's, he's got in good with the head jailer. <laughs> you know, now he's in prison, and he's trying to make the most of this situation. And what I want to tell you, every one of y'all in here today, listen to me. Is wherever God has you right now, wherever that may be, make the most of it. Do you understand what I'm trying to get to here? You understand what I'm saying? There are so many of us that want to waller in, in the mire and, and frustrate about, what be God, what be God, what be God. The why me's, we make them sit in the back. <laughs> That's where the TV's at. So, well, Lynn's thinking about who's back there right now. She's like, oh my gosh. I'm, if there's somebody back there, I apologize. I, I didn't know you were back there. <laughs> the why me is God. Why am I in this situation? Why, God, am I here? I'm trying to preach to you and teach to you that you know what? When you're in that situation, know that that's where God has you at that moment in time. Do you understand that? This is where God's got us. Now, does it mean, Matt, that we quit? Does it mean that we walk away? Does it mean that we give up? Does it mean that we cry like babies? It's like, oh my gosh, we've got to watch church on TV. We've got to go do this. It's just awful. What do we do? What do we do, God? We make the best of that situation. Do you understand what I'm saying? We take that situation that God has placed us. Listen to me. That God has placed us. That God has placed us. God still got this. That hasn't changed. This is where we're at, and I'm going to make the best of that situation. Hey, Matt, would I love to see the church full with people falling out the doors? Man, I would. Taylor, you go to first bow. I know. Wouldn't y'all love to see them just church, the, the, the whole building just overflow of people? We would. We would love to see that. We want to see that. But you know what? That's not where we're at. And it's probably not going to be where we're at. We're going to be for a minute. Because you know why? Because remember I got back earlier and I said Christians got an F. <laughs> we're going to play scared for a little while. But because of where we're here, it means we're going to have to do things a little different. It means we're going to have to be, you know, I, I've had, I, I constantly are getting people asking me, what are we going to do? How are we going to do this? When are we going to do this? How are we going to do, what are we going to do next? And I'm going to be honest with y'all. I'm going to be honest with y'all. I know that I'm not the greatest leader in the world, but here's the, the answer you've been looking for. I don't know, okay? I don't have all the answers, Randy. I don't. What I am going to tell you is this, and this is the promise that me and Brother Sammy and my wife and Wanda can make to y'all. I can promise y'all this as we go forward. We are going to do the best we can. Amen. We're going to do the best we can in this situation. That's what we're going to do. It may not be what you like. It may not be what you're used to. It may, hey, listen, it may even require something else of you, okay? But we're going to do the best we can as Christians in this situation. Do you understand that? Even if it means you've got to go sit with your mom in church and make sure that she don't hug everybody there. Because <laughs> you know she'd have hugged every one of us. You know that. I was, I was worried about her, as Max said, I was worried about her doing some aisle walking anyway. Y'all know what the aisle walking is. It's like in a Pentecostal church. I told him, I said, Sister Shirley got on top of them pews. <laughs> Somebody forgot to tell her this was a bad situation. <laughs> Hey, you know what? I love it that God's got people. I love it that God's got people like that because it helps us, the ones that are trying to get there, see that. It helps those of us that maybe their faith's not there, surely. Maybe they still got a, a ways to climb to say, you know what? Man, I want the God that she's serving. I want the God that she's got faith in. I want the God. I want, you know what? Like old life said, I want, I just want a half a little part of what you have. This little lady may be the shortest person in here, but she is a giant. She is an absolute Goliath in the eyes of God. That is no doubt. That is no doubt in my mind. She could have stayed at home today. I know. I get it. 
<laughs> no, no, no. No, Joey, she couldn't have stayed at home today. Because <laughs> you know why, Shirley? Let's walk right into that. You know why you couldn't stay at home? Because there's a time for reunion. Amen. <laughs> there is a time for reunion, y'all. You know, I tell you, I read some things in the Bible, and me and Sammy keep saying it, and they've said it. Matt quoted it in a prayer, and I said it this morning. But I'm going I'm to tell you something. I put it in capital letters when I sent it to my mama this morning. I was glad. <laughs> I tell you what, man, I don't know how long the psalmist had been out of church, Matt. I really don't understand. I don't know how many days he had missed. I don't know how many times he had not got to be there. I don't know who had kept him out. I don't know if it was his lack of faith. I don't know if it was he was out at battle. I don't know if he was gone from home. I don't know what his situation was. But I know I can identify with what he said. I was glad when they said unto me, when I got the announcement came down, let us go into the house of the Lord. I'm going to tell you something, folks. Church is going to take on a whole new meaning, isn't it? I tell you what, when, when old Joseph sat there with his brothers and it was time for reunion, think about all the days that Wanda, he had been separated from his family. All the time that they had gone by that he didn't see them. You know, those Sunday afternoon dinners. Those times when you go eat with your family on Sunday afternoon at the dinner table and your mom or your grandmother had made a meal and everybody's laughing and joking and telling stories. I'm going to tell you something, folks. That's the time for reunion. I'm going to tell you something. I don't care what the media says. I don't care what the world says. The church is important. You me tell you why the church is important? Because God said it was. This is an important place. This is an important place. And, and as Joseph sat there with his brother Sammy, and I know that he was holding back the tears. And that's, I, I'll be honest with y'all, as I got up this morning, I'm telling you, it's, it's a moment in time. And I'm, I'm holding back. I'm just like, God, I just I can't wait to be in there amongst God's people. I can't wait to get in there amongst. Now, see, some of y'all, I've, I've got me, me and Brother Don, we've gotten a taste. And that ain't that I haven't loved seeing you, Don. But there's just a lot more of us that, you know, we know that. We've just got a taste. And then I see those smiling faces. And I'm telling you, I don't know what happened. Sammy Joe back there, Sammy brought those, she brought those little kids in the back. When they came in today and they were smiling and happy. She had, she had sent me a couple messages along the way saying, I'm ready to go back to church. I'm ready to get back in that church again. I'm ready, you know what, just to be around God's people again. Folks, I'm going to tell you something. Maybe, maybe God let us go through this valley so we can recognize how important this is. We have lost our taste and our love for fellowship. And if you don't believe that, stand up here and preach sometimes and look at the people in this room. I'm telling you what, looking at the sad faces, you look like half the time they were beat to even come in this room. Or it's like, this guy got a, I'm going to miss out on fishing today. <laughs> Where's Scott at? Where'd he go? He's in, He's in the back. Scott, listen to me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't care. They can not record this later. Scott, listen to me. I'm going to die for this, what I'm about to tell y'all. I went fishing on a Sunday while this was all gone. Brother Matt was with me. <laughs> and listen to this. I didn't catch anything. And I told Matt, it rained on us. And I said, I will never fish on Sunday again. <laughs> Whether we have church or we don't have church, that will not happen again. And it had. I'm not going fishing on Sunday no more. Scott, you may have luck back there. That's fine. It ain't working for me. I told, I told Maddie, we got up there. We weren't catching nothing and getting sideways, sidetracked. I know that. But then it, then it started raining. And I told Max, I'm like, let's, let's just go home. Let's just, this is, I think God made a point to us. It's pretty clear. This is not where we're supposed to be, you know. And I'm not hating on the people that fish on Sunday. That's not what I'm saying. But maybe we should realize how important the reunion is. I, mean, I, I tell you, I, I think the thing that I, that I can't say enough, it's not that I've missed my church, but I love this group of people. I told Lynn on Mother's Day, I was trying to figure out what to preach. 
And as I sat there and I thought about all these ladies in this church and what they did, God just let it, he just let it snow down on me, if you will. And it just, it made me feel so good, Randy, when I, when I thought of, you know, we hadn't even been here four and a half years, and I thought of the way that all of these ladies had touched my life and let snow down. It reminded me how much I miss this place and these people and these smiling faces. And, you know, when, so when you hear me say I'm not afraid to be hugging you, <laughs> when you hear me say that I'm not afraid, I'm not. Because I serve a God that's bigger than this. He's, he's, hey, listen. Hey, listen, y'all. <laughs> Lynn knows I'm right about this. My mama is sitting in a wheelchair on, on go, just like you. They won't let them out of the, they won't let them out of, she's sitting there with her hands on the wheelchair and trying to go, but the second they do, I know she's going to be here. And it wouldn't matter how much I told her not to come, she would still be here. And, you know. <laughs> Let me tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. Let me tell you why she's going to be here. Because three and a half years ago, I was sitting in a hospital room with her, and they told her she wouldn't be here six months from then. You know what? You know what I learned from that? Not everything that people think they know so much is necessarily true. God has a plan. And he has this. You see what Joseph was trying to get to? And I'm going to tell you something, folks. And you can be scared. You can be afraid. You can do whatever you want to do. I don't care. The Bible teaches us it's appointed a man once to die, and after that, the judgment. That's what the Bible says. That means I have an appointment. It may come at the hands of Lynn. <laughs> it may come early. <laughs> it could, hey, you know what, Randy? It could come at the hands of a disease. It could come at the hands of an accident. But I'm going to tell you something, you know what? what, whenever and however he comes, it's not going to be a surprise to him. Because I got an appointment, okay? I'm not trying to test that appointment, Lawrence. I'm not trying to make it. But I, you know what? My faith is in him. My faith is in knowing that he's in control of the situation. And I'm going to tell you something, folks. The media didn't put me here. The government didn't put me here. I'm going to tell you something. Carroll County ain't got its hands on this. God put me Right here for this moment in time. God's got this, okay? There's the truth in that, okay? That's what, that's what Joseph was trying to say. Hey, y'all, shrug all this off, brothers. I know y'all feel like y'all had your finger on all this. And I think you may blame yourself for what's going on. We may be trying to figure it out. But God had his hand on this the whole time. And I've said... To so many people that are around me, and I keep saying it, either God is God or he isn't. Now, I sit up here and preach it all day long, <laughs> but you're the one that gets to decide it. My God. My God. That's what they're talking about when they get in some of those places. My God. He's in control of this. That David, I'm going to get on some of these stories. I can't wait to. You know, this, I mean, that's the fun stuff in the Bible. It is fun stuff because we should have fun. But my God, God had his hand on Joseph. God had his hand on Moses. God had his hand on Joshua. God had his hand on Elisha. God had his hand on all these men through the Bible. God had his, man, his hand on the disciples. God had his hand on those churches in Acts. God had his hand on the people that were on the boat <laughs> that Sammy's been preaching about. God had his hand on, and listen to this, don't let it be a surprise, Concord, but God's got his hand on us too. That Jesus that died on the cross 2,000 years ago, guess what? You know what, Rick? You know what? This is exciting, and we forget about it. But you know what? He died for me, too. He did. He, Randy, he died for you. You know what he did? He did. Matthew, he died for you. Sammy, he died for us. And I'm going to tell you something. If he's going to die for us, he's going to protect us. Joseph said, and I finish with it. <laughs> so now it was not you that sent me hither. All this, y'all. It was not you that sent me hither, but God. God's got this. Now, I want to tell y'all something. I am going to do something different because I am going, when I get through, get ready, get ready to pray here in just a second. I'm not going to tell you what to do, and I'm not going to make you do anything. But several Wednesday nights back, I told them, I was like, y'all, there's some parts of this puzzle that I don't like. 
I got on the phone with preachers the other day, and they were talking about, that man, if somebody gets saved or somebody comes to the altar, listen to me, our altar is going to be open. We're not closing the house on God's altar. We're going to pray, and uh, we are. We came in here the other night, I think several weeks ago, didn't we, Marchy? And I said, you know, we got everybody was giving I said, listen, we're going to put our hands on each other. <laughs> I want somebody to touch me. Let me tell you why I'm going to do that. You know, we'll tell you why I do stuff like that. Because this tells me to. Sammy, I'm not listening to CNN anymore, y'all. I love Fox News, but I ain't listening to them either, Jerry. I'm going to pay attention to what this says to do. This is the one who taught me that the hedge would be built around my life. This is the one that taught me that I will never leave you or forsake you. This is the one that taught me that God said, I'm going to be right there with you no matter where you are. This is what this taught me. Instead of saying, my faith's in what they're telling me, my faith is in my God. The God of Jehovah. How about that? I love it. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, most kind and gracious Heavenly Father. God, we're thankful. And God, as we open up your altar this morning to pray, and as Brother Jerry comes for a song, Lord, I don't, I don't know what the prayer may be. Maybe there's one in the house today, dear God, Lord, they're going through some financial problems. Some fin Lord, God, they're in the valley. They're in the pit. God, just let the love shine down on them and let them know it's going to be okay. Lord, and, and maybe, maybe there's one coming through that they're going through a hardship that they don't understand. And God, Lord, that Lord just that they need some comfort. They need some strength. They need the Spirit of God to be on top of them. God, I pray that, Lord, that they can come with their loved ones and not be, God, not feel afraid. Man, the good old, old Satan, he's got us on this one. He got us. He got us scared to death. God, let our faith be bigger than that. Let our faith be in you. Lord, I pray this morning, Jesus, dear God, Lord, even if there's one here today that's never accepted you as their Savior, they can't go back to a place in their life where they ask Jesus Christ to come into their heart, Lord. Lord, I would encourage them to come. Come running down to the altar and say, you know what, I want Jesus in my life. And I know there wasn't a message about him today, but Jesus, dear God, Lord, that opportunity is always on the floor. Lord, I pray, dear God, Lord, that you'd be with that soul. And God, thank you for what you're doing for this church. Use us in this community. Let your light shine through your people. And in Jesus Christ's name we pray, Lord. Amen. Amen. I want to take this time and thank you for watching and worshiping with us today. My name is Joey Dibman. I'm with Concord Missionary Baptist Church. If you are not a follower of Jesus Christ and have never asked him to come into your heart, I'd like to take a few moments to help you do just that. You know, the Bible tells us in Romans 10, 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You know, this is open to every one of us that requests because Romans 10, 13 goes on to say, even deeper, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So today, if you would like to pray with me, let's bow our heads and pray to our Lord and Savior and ask him, if you're seeking him to come into your heart today. Lord, I just want to take the opportunity that if there's someone out there today, and dear God, Lord, they're seeking you, dear God, Lord, and maybe they're at a place in their life where they can't see, but today through the Holy Spirit, which has pricked their heart through your word, not the words that I preach, but through the Holy Word, of an awesome Father. God, I pray today, dear God, Lord, that they would be enlightened. And God, I, I'd ask them today to pray with me and say, Lord, I want to be a believer. Dear God, Lord, I want to believe in the fact that I know that you walked on this earth. Lord, I want to know that you died for my sins. God, I want to believe in the fact that on the third day you resurrected from a tomb and you sit on the right hand of God. And today, Lord, I want to ask you to come into my heart. Lord, if there's one out there praying with us today, dear God, Lord, that's seeking you, Lord, I pray that they would say this prayer with me today, dear God, Lord, and invite Jesus Christ into their heart to forgive their sins. Lord, we thank you for your blessings upon us. God, we thank you for what you're doing for us. I just pray that you'd be with us through this moment in time. And dear God, Lord, and show us the things that you'd have us to see. In Christ's name we pray, Lord. Amen. You know, if you've done that today, 
if you've taken the opportunity to ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart. You know, he died on a cross close to 2,000 years ago and he walked on the earth. The Bible teaches us that everyone that calls upon the name of the Lord and believes in their heart that he has risen from the grave shall be saved. So if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior today, now I want to invite you to, you know what, into your new relationship with your Father. And I want to, to maybe help you, maybe through watching the videos as you learn and you grow, but maybe try to find a, a church that's close to you, a church home where you can go with other believers and walk with them and learn to grow with them. I invite you today also that maybe if today you've asked Christ to come into your heart, that, that you know what, maybe you would let us know. And drop us a postcard to say, you know, hey, I listen to these videos on YouTube. I appreciate what you've done. But I would like for y'all to know that on this date, on so-and-so, that I ask Jesus Christ to come into my heart. We'd invite you, and, and if you look at the address that's on the screen today, and, and maybe send a postcard. And then, you know what, if you don't want to write it down, maybe through email. There will be a, an email address that you can address to our church at Concord Missionary Baptist Church. You could just email us and let us know what's going on in your life. But even better than that out there today, maybe you are a, a Christian today and maybe you're not here in Temple, Georgia with us, but you're in your walk with Jesus today and you're, you're having some valleys that you're having to go through. And, and maybe you need some, to seek some prayer requests and some other shelters to lean on. I invite you to also to email us or drop us a card. We meet on Wednesday nights to pray. We take these things before the Father. We take these things very seriously. We come together as a group as we pray to our Father. So I'd invite you to, to send those prayer requests to us, and I promise you that we'll take them and put them on the altar and bring them before the Lord. Once again, I want to thank so much for you taking your time to come spend with us and worship with us, you know, through song, through word, but more, more than anything else, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May God bless you and your family.